On this video, I will discuss about probability. So, the probability of an event is a numerical measure of the likelihood or degree of predictability that the event will occur. The events whose probabilities we wish to calculate all occur as the outcomes of various experiments. By an experiment, we simply mean an activity with an observable outcome. For example, we have flipping a coin and observing whether it land head or tail. Another, we have rolling a red die and green die and observing the sum of the dots on each of their uppermost face. And another example is selecting a playing card from a full of deck. So these three activities have an observable outcomes, meaning to say they are experiments. So it is helpful to use the language of set to describe an experiment. The set consisting of all possible outcomes of an experiment is called the sample space. So, let us try to get the sample spaces of this experiment. For example, let us denote the first experiment as S sub 1. So, we have said that a sample space is the set consisting of all possible outcomes of the experiment. So, we have the sample space of experiment number 1 will be the set with the elements. So, the elements here are the possible outcomes. So, what are the possible outcomes when you flip a coin. So we have a head or a tail. So we have a head or a tail. So that is what we call a sample space. Another example. Let us denote example number 2 as S sub 2. So the sample spaces for the experiment number two will be the set with the elements. So, what are the possible outcomes when you roll a red die and a green die? Then you're going to sum the dots on each of their uppermost faces. So, we start with two because it is impossible for us to have a sum of 1 on 2 die. So, the list will be 2. Then followed by 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. So, the greatest sum that we can get from rolling a red die and a green die and observing their sum will be 12 and the lowest will be 2. So that is what we call the sample space. Now, let us proceed with the event. So an event is a subset of sample space. When we say subset, that is a set consisting the elements of the given set but not exactly the same set. Meaning to say that an event is just a portion of a sample space. For example, in experiment 2, so we have the rolling a red die and a green die and observing the sum of the dots on each of their uppermost 
phase. So, we are going to get the event of odd numbers. So, let A be the event of odd numbers. So, that will be A is the set with the elements. So, what are the odd numbers on our experiment 2? So, we have 3, 5, 7, 9, and 11. So, that will be the set with the elements 3, 5, 7, 9, and 11. As I have said a while back, that an event is just a portion of a sample space. So, that is what we call an event. Next will be the simple event. A simple event is an event that consists of a single element that is a set consisting of single outcome of an experiment. For example, the sample space for experiment number 1. So the sample space for experiment number 1 is the set with the elements head and tail. So when we get the simple events of that, so it can be the set with the element head or the set with the element tail. Because a simple event must only contain or must only consist of a single outcome. So it is either of the two. Continuing with probability, probability is the ratio of the number of ways this specified event can occur to the total number of equally likely events that can occur. Symbolically, the probability of an event can be denoted by P, the probability of an event E will be equal to N, small n, all over a capital N where the small n is the number of favorable outcomes, so that is the number of favorable outcomes, favorable outcomes, and the capital N is the number of possible outcomes. So that is the number of possible outcomes. So let us try to use or apply this formula in different examples. So example, on a one coin, what is the probability of having a head? First, let us try to identify the possible or the number of possible outcomes. So, how many possible outcomes are there when you flip a single coin or a one coin? So, there are two. So, it can be a head or tail. So, our N will be two. Then, getting now the probability of having a head, so probability of head will be equal to so, our number of favorable outcomes, so we are finding for head. So, there is only one head on a coin, so that will be 1 all over the possible outcomes, which is 2. So, the probability of having a head on flipping a single coin is 1 half. Another example. How about if we have 2 coins? So, on this, we need to find for the total number of possible outcomes. So we can use a contingency table in order for us to find for the total number of possible outcomes. For example, this will be our second coin. 
And this will be our first coin. So on our second coin, we have the possible outcomes of head and tail. On the first coin, we also have the possible outcomes of head and tail. Then combining now, we have a head and a head. We also have a head and a tail. Then we also have a tail and a head. Tail and a head. Then a tail and another tail. So as you can see on our table, we have four possible outcomes. We have a head and a head, head a tail, tail and head, and tail and tail. So our n will be four. Then let us now find for the probability of flipping two heads. So the probability now of flipping two heads will be equal to the number of favorable outcomes. So let us try to refer on our table. So how many two heads are there on our outcomes? We only have one. So that will be one all over the total number of possible outcomes which is four. So the, so the probability of flipping two heads on two coins will be one fourth. How about in finding the probability of at least one head? So when we say at least one head, so it can be a head and a tail, it can also be a head and another head. So the minimum will be one head. So let us try or let us refer again into our table on how many outcomes are there with at least one head. So we have one, two, and three. So the probability now of having at least one head, at least one head is equal to the number of favorable outcomes, which is 3, all over the total number of possible outcomes, which is 4. So the probability of having at least one head on two coins, on flipping two coins, will be 3 fourth. Next, how about on flipping a two coin with no head? Meaning to say that the outcome can only be both tail. Therefore, the probability of no head or 0h will be equal to 1 all over 4. Another example will be on dice. So let us find for the probability of having an even number. But first, let us identify the total number of outcomes. So on a single die or one dice, there are only six possible outcomes. So it can either be one, two, three, four, five, or six. So the number of possible outcomes will be six. Then what is the probability of having an even number? So the probability now of having an even number will be equal to the number of favorable outcomes. So how many even numbers are there from 1 to 6? So we have 3, 2, 4, and 6. So that will be 3 divided by the total number of possible outcomes, which is 6. Or, that will also the same as 1 half. So, the probability of having an even number on a single die will be 1 half. How about the probability that it will be 2 or 
3. So, the probability of 2 or 3 is equal to, so, the favorable outcomes will be 2. So, it can either be 2 or 3. So, that will be 2 divided by the total number of possible outcomes which is 6. Or, that will also be the same as 1 third. And the last, the probability that the number will be greater than 2. So, the probability that will be greater than 2. So, how many numbers are there greater than 2 from 1 to 6? So, we have 4. So, we have two, uh, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So, that will be 4 all over 6 or that will be 2 thirds. So, that is all about probability.